A week ago, cornerback Aiden White announced that he was entering the transfer portal and out of the program. Fast forward a week later, Aiden is white back in. You are locked on Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can get $150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place just a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Happy Friday to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. Aiden White is back. We had a little bit of a health scare. He entered the transfer portal last week. A lot of questions arose to why that may have been, maybe to play in a different defensive system, to weigh your NIL options. It's starting to look like maybe that was the case now, as Aiden White has announced he will be returning to NC State in 2024. I don't give a damn what the case was. <laughs> Aiden is back, okay? Congratulations, quarterbacks. The right side of the field, closed for business. Shut down. It's inoperable. And, boy, I'll tell you what. say with another year of experience on that other side, hmm, hmm, Alexa play deads because some brothers are in trouble. They in trouble out there on that, on that perimeter trying to attack this defense. I'll tell you what. This this season will be determined by how good our linebackers play and how well the offense meshes with all these new pieces. That's going to be the – we're going to look back on this 2024 season, and if we're not in contention or if we're not the ACC champs next year, the question is going to be, boy, how bad were our linebackers? It's going to be, boy, how much time did our offense need to jail? Because, you know – this this defensive backfield, the loss of Shaheen battle is a loss, is a loss. However, Cisse got better and better and better as the year went on. Our safety room, better and better and better, despite all of the injuries toward the end of the year. I mean, obviously there were plays here and there, but, you know, that's the nature of defensive back, right? As a defensive tackle, if you lose, it's not as visible to everybody, especially depending on the type of play as it is if you lose at safety. But Aiden White... Again, a guy that has allowed, you know, I've I've got more strands of hair on my head than he's allowed touchdowns very recently. And if y'all can't see, there's a glare coming off this big cranium of mine for a reason, okay? That brother is a bad man. He is. And, and the thing that I find so interesting about, you know, I've talked to scouts about him, and the thing that I find so interesting is there is a lack of talent evaluators who understand the difference between a football player and an athlete, especially at the corner position. With all due respect, if you tell me, hey, I've got a guy that's six foot one, long arms, you know, super long arms and, and runs a four three, but he can't play the ball worth a damn when it's in the air, or I've got a guy that's 5'11", six feet, not as long limb, but is flatly amazing at understanding leverage, at understanding route concepts. he You put him on an island, one-on-one -on -one with some of the best in the game, and he's going to hold his own. And for whatever reason, the NFL is going to go the first guy's way. I don't get it. I personally don't understand it. But, you know, that's that's where we are. And, and again, I would argue he's a very different case from certain guys who may make people shy away from that type of situation. For example, a tease Tabor out of uh, Florida, right? Aiden White, on the other hand, he gets man -a mano a mano. It's me and you, brother. Let's dance all night long. And I'll tell you what, he doesn't need Frank Sinatra to not re to to remind him not to leave who he came to the party with, because that brother stuck to him like glue. 
As the saying goes, sometimes the best gets are the ones you already had. And this is perhaps one of the biggest pieces of news to come out of this entire offseason so far. You can almost look at Aiden White as like a five-star transfer, not exactly leaving, but it feels like a five-star transfer now coming back into this program because that is the type of talent that Aiden White possesses. And every time I think of Aiden White in 2023, I go back to one of your locked on looks of the week, Kenton, when he baited Tyler Van Dyke into that throw in the end zone and just picked him off like it was off like a piece of cake uh, in such a crucial part of that ball game. Aiden White is a master at his position. Like you mentioned, he can go one on one. He can play zone. He can jam you at the line. He can bait a quarterback into a poor throw. He is everything you want in a corner and more. And all the experience he possesses as well, because you're going to have a secondary that, you know, they have a little bit of experience, but none of which measure up to Aiden White. So you look at a Brandon C say you want to bring him up through the ranks. Who better to learn from? than Aiden White. He had that all of this season as well, but another season learning underneath Aiden and probably playing on the opposite side of him will do so much good for CSA's development. But being able to know that Aiden White is coming back and you can lock down an entire side of the field, perhaps no one is more excited than Tony Gibson about this news because now this allows so much more comfortability in the way he can call a game defensively mm-hmm. because if you lose Aiden White, you, have, you do have some relative inexperience back there in the backfield, and the rest of the defense is going to have to realign based on that. When you have a shutdown, lockdown, White Island corner in Aiden White, so many things change for the better. And this defense, they're going to be taking a little bit of a step back. But if you keep Aiden White in there, it's going to be another strong defense. Talk about that lockdown look of the week that you referenced a little bit. I don't think that people understand how special it is to intentionally let a receiver get behind you and cover four because you are anticipating an underthrow by their quarterback. One of the rules of cover four is deep as the deepest. Nobody gets behind you. That's that's one of the rules. He broke the rule. He went all Maverick and Top Gun on us <laughs> to ensure that the Wolfpack were going to get the ball back. That's the type of talent that you, you're looking at here. And that's why I tell people, He's not – this is not a player that – I don't give a rat's behind what he measures at in the combine. I don't care about any of that. Again, the the player that I think he's most like, even though he hasn't played this amount of zone, is Desmond King out of Iowa from a few years back. Desmond wasn't the tallest. He wasn't the fastest. Didn't have the longest of limbs. And yet he went on to become a pro bowler and and was on the verge of all pro – because he understood the game. He understood leverage. He understood, he watched film so diligently, he knew which quarterbacks were overthrowers and underthrowers. He knew which receivers gave different cues in this way or that way when they're coming out of the breaks. And if, by Aiden's play, you know that he he is in a very similar vein. And you know that. And, and, and it's he's going to be special. He's going to be special to have back next year. He's going to be special to have whoever gets him in the NFL in the 2025 draft. Aiden White running it back with the Wolfpack for one more season. Enormous win for NC State in 2024. Coming up next, we have Fan Friday diving into some of the top comments of the week after a quick word from our sponsors. Our first sponsor of the day is FanDuel. The NFL season is wrapped up and NFL wildcard weekend starts this weekend. So there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get $150 back in bonus bets guaranteed when you place just a $5 bet. That's right, $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is super easy to use, and there's so many different ways to bet, including live same-game parlays, finding bets within the new Explore tab, and making a parlay on the Parlay Hub, which is the best way to find popular parlays. With the multitude of interesting storylines across the NFL this weekend, get on over to FanDuel and win more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a touchdown. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Middle portion of our Friday show here. It's now time for Fan Friday. We got quite a few of them. Let's dive into it. Our first one here comes from our guy, Andy. He actually asked this to us on Tuesday, so I've been sitting on this one for a little while. A lot to read here, so I'm going to get to the point. 
Andy says, question on raising the ceiling. What is it going to take to go out and play with the big boys on the national stage? Every year we get the hype train going and think we're ready. Then that 5-0 and train goes to a bowl and looks like the team that went up against UConn. Paraphrasing down to the bottom. So really, can we really get ourselves into that top 12 conversation? And now, Andy, there's a lot of different ways to answer this, but the way I see it here. When you look at the recent commitments of like a Hollywood Smothers and a Noah Rogers and a Jordan Waters, a Grayson McCall, when you bring in the cream of the crop talent and then you get them into the system, that is how you begin to raise this ceiling. We've now established a floor of about eight to nine wins. I'd like to keep it at nine so we keep going above nine. But NC State's football program, as we've said many times on here, they are known for player development. But what happens when you start getting four and five star guys is you're going to see more wins. You're going to see more production on both sides of the ball. And that's kind of what we've been really waiting for here at NC State. Not to say we haven't been getting bang for our buck, but you know, you look at a guy like a Noah Rogers, one of the best wide receiving prospects to come out of the state of North Carolina for a very long time to get him to turn around and come back home from Ohio State, and he can have an instant impact type of season. Once you bring in higher levels of talent and you bring in these guys that are projecting higher ceilings than what you're usually accustomed to, you're going to see this ceiling begin to raise. And we've heard all about the transfer portal additions on offense. The on-field success is what raises the ceiling. you got to get the Larrys and Joes, as Kenton loves to say, But once you get the Larrys and Joes and then you experience more on-field success, that will bleed into the next year and the next two years, the next five years. NC State is right on the cusp. And I know we're the wait till next year school, right on the cusp of seriously changing the way this football program is perceived nationally among recruits, among program success, all of it. We are right on the doorstep. If this team in 2024 gets to where we think that they can go, you might see NC State really take off with this thing. There is no magical bean. There is no shortcut. There is no answer Grayson and I can give that would magically make this team be that. It takes getting over the hump. And I know that that sounds ridiculous to say getting over the hump takes getting over the hump. Yes, that's what it takes. It takes no more excuses. It takes no more almost. It takes no more next year. It takes actually getting over the hump. That's what it takes. And also, there was a large part of this that mentioned bowl games in the middle. Bowl games are a bad barometer by which to measure, hey, how good is a team? What's the the health of that program? Especially if it's not a a New Year's Six or a playoff bowl game. Because nine times out of ten, like we saw in these most recent games, you're not out there with a full deck. If you're playing with a reduced version of a team, I don't think it's necessarily fair to, you know, kind of – Put that up and say, hey, what does this what does this mean for the season and all that in comparison to what you did in conference, what you did when you did have all your horses in the stable? Most Florida State fans believe they won't be in the conference past 2025 and Clemson refuses to use the transfer portal. Do with that information what you will. And another reason I found this question so interesting is way back in July when Kenton and I went down to ACC kickoff in Charlotte. Kenton actually asked Coach Dorn a very similar question to this one. Basically, you know, Coach, you've experienced success here. What is it going to take to get over the hump? You you started to win eight to nine games. What does it take to get above that, win 10 games, get to an ACC championship? And Coach Dorn basically said, you know, sometimes it's one play. Sometimes it's one player. The consistency ultimately gets you in the arena. You just got to get over that hump being whatever it takes, kind of like Kenton mentioned there. Sometimes it's one play. Sometimes it's one player. This transfer portal class, you look like you might have many players that could be that one player to eventually get you there. Next one here from Mr. Big Bad Wolf. What's the difference to raise the floor when otherwise it wouldn't happen, Robert and I? Big question. Does the defense give up 7 to 10 more points per game and the high-powered offense that is coming in cover it? Now, this is interesting because I think you can look at this one in a multitude of ways well. Now getting Aiden White back, that does change the perception of the defense just a bit, but we would be naive to expect the same exact level of production of the defense next year, obviously, because Peyton Wilson's not going to be walking through that door. You have to expect the defense is going to take a little bit of a step backward. You also expect the offense to be taking 
quite a large step forward. So one thing I will not do is doubt Tony Gibson. We've learned our lesson time and time there again. He can get the job done with basically whatever you give him. I expect many more points to be scored offensively, but maybe you will see a difference in that NC State might find themselves in more shootouts than maybe we're accustomed to. We might be lighting up the scoreboard in a way you haven't seen. You know, I want to make something very clear to you all, and I, I want this to be reality is since Tony Gibson has gotten NC State has been one of the best defenses in the ACC, regardless of what was going on, regardless of, of who the players were that he had to work with. And so with that in mind, um, with all due respect, I don't really see a world where I'm all that concerned and worried about where NC State is going to be or, or who we're going to be as a defense. With all due respect, if it takes uh, you being naive to believe this defense is going to be good, well, I guess I'm going to buy somebody's oceanfront property in, in Muncie, Indiana, because I am the most naive of them all. I think that, that Tony Gibson is once again going to have this defense probably top 35 to 40 in the nation. Somewhere in that area, 25 to 40, somewhere in there, maybe four or five points more per game. But I mean, that's that's just my thought. I look at some of the guys that Tony Gibson took to all conference levels. You're talking about a Tanner Engel, who was not a superstar out of out of high school. You're talking about an Aiden White, who was not a superstar. You're talking about a Corey Durden. You're talking about a Davin Van that, again, was not a superstar. Hey, this is a surefire can't miss prospect for state. Uh, by most folks. So honestly, I don't think the defense would give up a full touchdown more than they did this year. And again, I think that we have this expectation of the offense to put up like 35 a game. And I would say, hold your horses because there there's a lot of new pieces that are going to try to come together quickly here. Next one here from Dragon on keeping North Carolina high school football players within North Carolina. David Sanders doesn't have NCSU in his top five, according to 247. And legacy player Kendra Harrison doesn't have a favorite, according to 247. Maybe the additions of Smothers, Rogers, Paler, Anderson, Grimes, etc. will persuade Sanders and Harrison to stay North Carolina in Raleigh. And that's a great point. It kind of also speaks to what we were talking about in raising the ceiling. If you experience a ton of success here in 2024, and you're looking at these major prospects in 2025 and 2026, always actively trying to build that fence and keep these type of guys within the state, that is how you raise the floor and raise the ceiling of your program. If you can keep a guy like a David Sanders, who I believe is like the number one offensive tackle in the country for 2025, and then Kendra Harrison is just an absolute freak of an athlete, plays both tight end and defensive end, if I'm not mistaken, for Reedsville. If you can get those two guys to come to NC State and follow in the more recent footsteps of guys like Dalen Smothers and Noah Rogers, and this homegrown movement really starts to pick up traction, you could create a, a powerhouse of a pipeline to keep all of this talent within the state and funneled toward Raleigh. That is how NC State could be on the way to becoming a special program. I want people to think about, go back a few years, when Dabo first took over the job in terms of uh, in terms of Clemson, right? How many of South Carolina's top guys were leaving the state? How many could they hold on to? With all due respect, the additions of these guys, that's not enough. Not enough to get a Sanders, not enough to get a Harrison. You know what it is enough to get them? A ring. Yeah. That's enough to get them. Imagine, imagine how how crazy David Sanders would look leaving the state to go compete nationally if it's like, oh, not only did NC State win uh, the ACC, but they also won the first round playoff game. Hmm. The equation gets a little different then, doesn't it? We talk all the time about all these great players that NC State missed out on and, and why, right? Devin Hester story. Yeah, I was going to go to NC State. But what happened, Grayson? His mama wanted him close to home. And so he ends up at Florida State. I mean, at uh, Miami. Imagine, imagine if you will, one of these two's grandmothers say, baby, can you stay home? I want to watch you play. Imagine granddad says, baby, can you stay home, little man? I want to watch you play. And all of a sudden they say, okay, fine. I'll stay close enough. 
And then you ask, well, who has the best program outlook in a, let's say, 150, 200 mile radius? The answer is clear. It's not going to be the boys in baby blue. Their soft program ran by a soft chin man named William, who probably needs to go sit down in a retirement home. It's, it's, there's only one correct answer at that point in time. So bringing these players in is great. Bringing a ring in would be even better. Last one here, some basketball talk from Donald. This team's not good enough, plain and simple. Keats is going to miss the tournament five out of seven years, and y'all still don't want to talk about whether or not he's the guy. Dave Dorn was 100%, <clears throat> Dave Dorn was 110% right. We're not a basketball school. Let's keep it real, fellas. No PR answers now. So kind of what I responded to Jonald here is a lot of the criticism right now is valid and not all of it after the frustrating loss to UNC on Wednesday night. But the the overall broad scope of the program, the direction it's heading, and not just the direction it's heading, but even this year, you start to see some parallels between this season and and last season. If you don't make it back to the dance, I don't know if I see a future past that for Kevin Keats in Raleigh. You have got to make it back to the dance, especially when you've assembled perhaps your most talented roster and you haven't been able to get to the tournament and win a game. If you can't break past that first round with your best roster, you reach the point where it's like, okay, I I think the time might be up here. However, there's something I have been saying here whether he is the guy or he's not the guy, right now at this point in the season, you can't call it quite yet. There's still two months of basketball still to play. You can't quit yet. We just saw it in football. Everyone wanted to quit after the Duke game. We finished 9-3. and three. Another one I referenced, in 2021, the baseball team really struggled at the midpoint of the season. Everybody was calling for Elliott Avent's head then. What happened? Top three finish in Omaha with an asterisk because we all know what happened there. You can't quit on the guys yet. It is still the middle of January. If Keats is the guy, he will be. If he's not, then he won't be. But we still got some time to find that out together. You want to talk about whether or not we want to talk about uh, if Keats is the guy? I'll put it like this. If he misses the tournament this year, I don't want to hear any discussion except who our new coach is going to be. There you go. Period. If he misses the tournament. I, I hope that that's as keeping it real as you need it. Because I mean this very genuinely. If he misses the tournament this year, in the words of the immortal Ray Charles, hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. I understand the sanctions and all that were part of why, you know, NC State missed the tournament and all that good stuff. I get that. But at the end of the day, we're looking at year seven, right? If we're talking about being a bubble team again, all the conversations are on the table for me. If we barely get in, don't win a game, all the conversations are on the table for me personally. Yeah. If we don't get in, the only conversation I want to hear is NC State parts ways with head coach Kevin Keats. That's that's the only conversation I want to hear. Okay? That's it. Now, with that being said, we talked about this before. We talked about many people having the exact same conversation about Doran all of three months ago. Right. All of three months ago, it was – we're four and three. This team's going nowhere fast. We're cooked. Bada bing, bada boom. Now all of a sudden we're saying Charlotte or bust in 2024. You see how these things work out? Nine win team saying Charlotte or bust in 2024. So if Keats turns this ship around, hey, more power to him. I'm with you. If he can't, he can't. And he won't. And he's not the guy. I'm not going to say he won't. He won't be the guy anymore. And that's that on it as far as I'm concerned. Up next, we're going to round out our Friday episode discussing a big win for women's basketball and the men's team heading out to Louisville on Saturday after a quick word from our sponsors. Our second sponsor of the day is Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all of the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. You can see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect upon arrival. Their all-in prices show your total up front, so you know that you're getting a great deal before you check out. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price guaranteed. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, 
Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So download Game Time today. Create an account and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. And again, create an account and use redeem code Locked On L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Last couple of minutes here on Friday, the women's basketball team took Virginia to the cleaners on Thursday night. They beat them by a score of ninety three to sixty six. Ran out the gate to a 31-point first quarter and never looked back. Zoe Brooks registered a career-high 19 points. So this is me, again, telling you how good Zoe Brooks is. Insanely talented freshman. If she continues on this trajectory, could end up being an all-time great for West Moore's women's basketball team. Another fantastic game for Madison Hayes. She had 17-5 and five on 54% shooting. 15 for Isaiah James, 14 for Mimi Collins, and 13 for Lacey Steele. Welcome to the party. Impressive win nonetheless. Never gave Virginia a chance in this. Exactly what you want to see after a deflating loss up in Blacksburg. This team is extremely balanced, and we see it once again, right? You have Zoe Brooks doing her regular, do a little bit of everything routine. You have Mimi Collins coming in hot, Madison Hayes coming in hot. To be able to kind of withstand Sanaya Rivers struggling to score a little bit is impressive. But what's even more impressive than that is Sanaya Rivers' ability to elevate the other parts of her game when her shot isn't falling. She continued to defend at a high level tonight. She continued to distribute the ball at a high level tonight. This team is poised to do something special. They're deep. They expect to win. And I'll tell you, the way that they came out pissed off tonight, the way they came out with the the determination to say, we're going to bounce back and we're not going to give Virginia room to breathe. We're going to suck the air out of Virginia from the rip. That's the signature of a damn good team. And last word here, men's team, of course, don't forget they play at Louisville Saturday at noon. Another one of these can't lose games. If you win, it doesn't really help you. But if you lose... It is very bad news. It's a mess around and find out type of game. Don't be the team that goes to Louisville and ruins their own season. Don't let it be you. You cannot allow this UNC loss to snowball into two losses. So move your body, move the ball, get down the floor, rebound, and leave no doubt. Cannot afford for any funny business out in Kentucky on Saturday. Kenny Payne, they won two back-to-back ACC games in his time as the coach at Louisville. He has not done it once. The only two game winning streaks he's ever had have both included a mid-major team. One included FAMU, one included Bellarmine. Don't let this be you, NC State. Don't, they beat Miami in their last game. So they're feeling good about themselves. They got the good feelings, good vibes rolling. NC State needs to come in there pissed off and take a lesson from Wes Moore in the gang, huh? Take a lesson from Madison Hayes in the game. Take a lesson from Zoe Brooks in the game. Come in pissed off and leave no doubt from opening tip off to final buzzer who the better team. That'll do it for us here on Friday. As always, thank you all so much for tuning in with us. Make sure to hit that like button. Drop your comments in the comment box. Tell us what you think about this impressive women's win. Tell us what you think about the men's chances in Louisville on Saturday. And tell us what you think about Aiden White returning to the Wolfpack in 2024. As always, mash that subscribe button. We will see you all on Monday. Until then, go Pack. Go Pack.